Hello there. Right, I've got a scenario. I've got an Azure SQL database with a small footprint data warehouse in it. So I've got some tables, I've got some facts, I've got some dimensions, but really the data, no more than tens of gigs, okay? I've got some data in a data lake in Delta format. Okay, so about 1.2 billion rows of telemetry data, which is relevant to the data that's in the Azure SQL database. It's essentially some web visit data, whereas the Azure SQL database holds the sales data and it holds the product information and customers, etc. There's a feature in Azure SQL database called Elastic Query, which is used to query across database. So you can you know, query one Azure SQL database uh, from another. And it actually works with serverless SQL pools in Synapse Analytics. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to switch to my super simplistic PowerPoint that just shows I've got a data lake, I've got an external table that I've created over that data in the data lake in serverless SQL pools, and I can query that from the Azure SQL database and ultimately join the data from serverless from the data lake with the data that's in the Azure SQL database and just have like one surface area, one service to query. So in Synapse, we're going to set up brand new serverless SQL pools database, add the security in, add the objects in, switch to the Azure SQL database and add the objects there. Then we should be able to query. Then there's a caveat in how you use the Elastic Query that I'll, I'll show. Now, I've already created a login, a SQL login, because that's required for Elastic Query. But I'm going to create a brand new database so SQL Elastic Query Vid. And then if I switch to that database, what I'll do is I'll create a user, a SQL user from that login. I'm going to create a master key because I'm using managed identity to talk to the data lake to allow serverless SQL pools to read data in the data lake. So I'm going to do this all in one statement. Then to enable me to create the external table in serverless for the Delta format, I am super excited about external uh, tables using the Delta format in serverless. I'm going to run that query and I'm just going to alter the database and set the collation to UTF-8. There's a great video on the official Azure Synapse Analytics channel from the SQL Espresso guys talking about collation. Now, yeah, I know it's not super interesting, but that video is, so definitely check it out. All right, so a few statements to get that serverless SQL pools database up and running, add in the security and add in the connection to the data lake. Then what I can do is I can create an external table over the Delta data. The Delta data, by the way, we'll just have a little look at that. Okay, so I've got it in a partition scheme. So I've got year, I've got the month and I've got the date. Then the data resides within those folders. So what I can do for a Delta table, I can add three columns. Those columns don't actually exist in the underlying data itself but they're the columns that serverless will identify, will see as the partition columns. And I can add them to the table and use those to filter, use those to, well, partition prune. So let's create that external table, run that. Should take a few seconds. Need to create the schema first. There we go. So there we go. Okay. Going to create that external table. Okay. Then what I need to do is grant select 
on that table to the SQL user. SQL user doesn't have any permissions yet to do anything. I also need to grant access to the credential that talks to the data lake. I've got a question with Microsoft about that at the moment. Okay. But yep, so I'm going to grant select and then grant the ability for the SQL user to use the credential to talk to the data lake. And then let's just run a select. Fingers crossed, should see some data. There we go. Okay, so that's the data coming through from the data lake. So that's it from the serverless perspective. We switch to the SQL database, the Azure SQL database side of things. Now I'm using Azure, I'm using Azure Data Studio. I've created a notebook and we're going to set up the security for the Elastic Query feature and then the object, the external table object, and then start querying. Now, I've already created the master key in the database. So what I need to do is create a database scoped credential that uses the SQL user credentials that I created within serverless. Then we can create an external table that uses the endpoint of serverless and uses that credential. And we point it to the database that we created our external table in. So let me run that. Okay, all good. And then I can create my schema and external table. Now I've already created the LDW schema, so I'll just comment out that. And I'll run the external table using the data source that I created earlier. Now, the schema has to match, okay? So I've got my um, user ID, event type, and all my columns in there. And finally, I should be able to query the table within the Azure SQL database, okay? So I'm gonna run, I'm just gonna do a top 10. I'm gonna use the event date to uh, only select data from a specific folder. I mean, look, two seconds, got my data back. What we'll do is we'll switch to Synapse Studio very quickly and just look at the monitoring. Okay, so I can look at the monitoring, I can look at the SQL requests, and look, there we go, there's the select top 10. So select top 10 and, you know, this is the query that's being sent. Okay, I've got my filter there. We go back to Data Studio. What I want to do first is run a query where I've got that external table and I'm going to join it to a view that's in the Azure SQL database that basically just denormalizes some of the product tables, but it's all in the Azure SQL database, but I'm gonna to join to that external table. I am grouping by, okay? So I expect, you know, just uh, an aggregate count of the events uh, based on the product. So it's basically people browsing a website and looking at products. However, I'm gonna run that and I'm gonna switch back to Azure Studio, refresh the SQL requests. All right, we've got this query running. What it's actually doing is, there's no aggregation involved, unfortunately. It's simply selecting all the rows from the external table, from the data in the data lake. If I had a filter, yes, it would apply that filter, but it's getting all of the rows and it's expecting the Azure SQL database to do the aggregation instead, okay? So we'll flick back to Azure Data Studio. I'm gonna stop that query because the likelihood is it isn't gonna complete. Instead, I mean, I've got some various options to get the data from the serverless SQL pools into the Azure SQL database. I can just run an insert statement. I can create a temp table here. I'm just using a CTE, 
So I'm just using a common table expression just to get the aggregated data from serverless SQL pools. Then I'm going to join it internally with, uh, or rather join it to the internal objects in the Azure SQL database. If I run that, I'm going to flick back to Data Studio, uh, sorry, Synapse Studio one more time. So actually, there we go. So eight seconds. So we've got all the categories, we've got all the events associated to the products in those categories. Okay. So let's switch back to Synapse Studio. Refresh. And have a look at that. So yeah, eight seconds. So one gig of data processed, because it's basically running it over the entire Delta data. And in my select that's being sent down. There we go, I've got a group by, okay? And as you saw, it came back pretty fast. It is grouping, yeah? So I'm getting, you know, a subset of the data, uh, or I'm grouping the data, or serverless is grouping the data, and returning that result set back to the Azure SQL database. But essentially, I'm just querying it with one database, in Azure, to the Azure SQL database. I connect Power BI, maybe importing data, and I can just set up processes to just use the Azure SQL database, but using the power of serverless to query the data in the data lake. There's one final command. I'll leave it for another video, but that's the SP execute remote. And essentially, I can just run SQL queries over serverless. I don't necessarily have to set up an external table. But we'll go through that in a, in a separate video, because we can create some views as well as run SQL statements as well. So if you've enjoyed this video and you're not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. And if you've got any questions about this process, leave a comment and I'll get back to you. But I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon.